Uh, thank you all for being here. My name is Patrick Valdez. I am the project director for the Diplomas program, which you are going to hear uh, a little bit about uh, over the next, uh, over today and over and tomorrow. Before we get started, uh, I was telling Jacob um, that uh, when I walked in here, I thought, oh, this is going to be a little bit more comfortable. I mean, I'm emceeing, but this seems kind of like familia here, like we're it's a smaller group. At times, we have to be in these big halls, and so that's the tone we want to kind of set uh, in here today and, and through tomorrow, right, that we're all kind of familia, and that would spit the tone of being in San Antonio, I guess. So I thought I'd start off with a kind of a joke. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's a good joke. So this, uh, this um, spouse uh, woman is getting dressed in the morning. And she looks over and she notices that her husband hasn't gotten up for work. So she comes over and she says, uh, excuse me, hon, but uh, you're, you're going to be running late. You know, you haven't gotten up for work yet. And he's like, yeah. He goes, I, I, just, I just don't know if I want to go to work today. And she's like, well, what's wrong? And he goes, well, I don't really know if I like the people that I work with. And he goes, and to be quite honest with you, I don't. I don't really think that they like me very well either. And there's a lot of bickering and a lot of people got to work together and put aside differences and and then they talk about each other and nobody wants to kind of really work together. And he goes, so I, I just don't know if I want to go. She goes, well, there's two reasons you have to go to work. And he says, well, what's that? She goes, well, the first one is we have bills to pay. Goes, okay. She goes, the second is you're the project director and I get your butt to work. <laughs> so... That was to help kind of set the tone for what we're about to do over the next few days. Um, and and we're, we have important work to get done. And what I want to do real quick before I introduce some very important people that are here today is give a, a quick overview about why we're here. Uh, now many of you are familiar with Lumina's big goal. Uh, if you're not, let me, first, uh, let me just be the first one to, to kind of give a quick overview over it. And basically, uh, the big goal that Lumina has is Go 2025 is to increase the number of uh, post-secondary degrees in the U.S. to 60% by 2025. Now, those of you that live in the state of Texas are familiar with the Closing the Gaps initiative uh, that's been going on. And those of you that here live here in San Antonio, which everybody does, I'm making that assumption, some of people have come in from out of town, but there's the SA 2020, which also has uh, some very aggressive goals, and we're going to talk about those today. And so Lumina's big goal of 2025 they figured there's only really one way we can get to that if you look at the demographics that are taking place in the country. And the way that one way that we're going to do it is by investing in communities that have large Latino student populations because we know that this is the growing population. Uh, and so in terms of the K-12. through And so they decided that they were going to start investing these monies into these areas. And they picked, uh, I believe, 13 communities throughout the U.S. And some have a long history. And that's important to say here in San Antonio because there are some efforts that have been going on for several, several years. I mean, his, uh, San Antonio has a, that history, and, and that is important to this project. They also picked some communities like Kentucky and in Indiana that, to be quite honest, are kind of dealing with this growth and not, are not sure how to do it. So they, they spread the money around into different places, uh, California, uh, New Mexico, and so forth. And so San Antonio was one of those. And so I have the honor of, of being hired to be the project director for here in San Antonio. So I will be working closely with each of you uh, in each of you districts over the next few years. And so uh, I'm glad that I had the opportunity to meet you here today. And so the Diplomas, w when you think about the Diplomas project, there's a accent on the, on the A, right? Diplomas. And so one way to think about it is mas Diplomas, <laughs> right? <laughs> like we want to do more. But, but also when you think about the collective impact principles that surround this initiative and, and and let's make no mistake, this initiative is based on collective impact. That is why we have all of you here today. All right, it's about everybody kind of coming together and figuring out how do we get someplace together. We know how to do it individually, or at least we know that we can have success individually, but how do we do it as a community? And again, there's a history of, of this being t of taking place in San Antonio, so we want to just kind of emphasize that and build upon that even more in this project. And so when I get up in the mornings now, I think of MAS as in Más organización, you know, more organization. You know, más inteligencia, you know, more intelligence. Más fuerza, more power. And so that's what this program is all about, or this project, this Diplom Más project is all about. It's about how do we all come together to move the needle when it comes to Latino student success in the city of San Antonio, the great city of San Antonio that is located in the great state of Texas, as I would often say. 
And before I get to, before I turn it over to our, our presenter, I do want to announce some very, uh, again, important people because they are not only our facilitators, uh, you know if you've ever facilitated a group of high-powered, uh, uh, very opinionated uh, and intelligent people, that that's not always an easy task. So we definitely appreciate them uh, being facilitators today. And we also want to introduce our funders, which is the, the Texas Guaranteed, or TG as they're known. And we have Jacob Frey. Uh, Jacob, you just raise your hand. Uh, Elizabeth, <laughs> Elizabeth Stanley is also with TG. T TG is just is always there. Uh, I can't tell you how many projects I've been involved in with Latinos uh, in different places. And Jacob and I, uh, we've known each other for years. We both went to St. Edwards University, and so uh, we have that in common. But we've also just kind of run into each other over the years in these d initiatives at TG Fund. So we're, all, we're definitely appreciative. Incidentally, I should brag on SEU. Elizabeth Stanley also has a connection to St. Edwards University. And so does uh, our advice Texas partner here, uh, Jennifer Tywater. Incidentally, on age here, I hired Jennifer to be a peer advisor when I was at St. Ed's. She was 21, the age of my daughter now, and that's just scary. <laughs> uh, not scary that you're where you are, but scary that I'm um, just getting that order. And here's proof I had to highlight and make like 20 font. It's either that or where the bifocals. Um, the next people I, person I want to introduce are, are our facilitators, and we have uh, Alma Garcia, if you would raise your hand, from Educate Texas. <laughs> We have Judy McCormick with the P16 Plus Council. <laughs> Gina Amatangelo from the Office of State Representative Mike Villarreal. <laughs> and Jean Russell is the Office of the Mayor uh, Castro. Castro. Jean back there. <laughs> we also have with us a very special guest, uh, Greg Darneter. Greg, Greg is with the White House. <laughs> And the next thing I'd like to do is introduce our, um, I'm sorry, oh, I, of course, can't forget the most important person, <laughs> person who signs my checks, uh, Ira Pettis, who is the, the executive director of uh, the San Antonio Education <laughs> Partnership. Because <laughs> I couldn't see you back there, Ira, that's the only reason. Uh, I'd like to introduce next is uh, Sonia Rodriguez. She's going to give us some opening words. Uh, she is a partner at Branton and Hall. She's one of the tri-chairs of the SA 2020 visioning process. She's been a chair of the Mayor's Commission on the Status of Women under two, uh, under two Mayors and was a founding board member of SA 2020. And so if I could now turn this over to you. Good morning. Um, I am delighted to be uh, with you guys this morning and I'd like to welcome you to what is sure to be more than just an education conference on college readiness. Um, I was thrilled when Mayor Castro asked me to become involved in SA 2020. SA 2020 was a grassroots, really intense focus group of an entire city, which of course, I have to confess, I thought was impossible. How many of you have participated in a focus group? Okay, imagine that with a thousand people. And the whole time I'm thinking, okay, Mayor Castro, I'm with you, but I just don't know how this is gonna work. I'm a trial lawyer. I'm trying to convince 12 people in a jury box of one thing, and that's hard to do. And um, it was done, we did it. And the San city of San Antonio did it. The community members did it. How many of you uh, participated in any one of the SA 2020 uh, focus groups? Not many. Let me tell you what happened and what we did. So, over the course of five different meetings, focus groups that had different themes and ideas and developmental I uh, focuses each meeting, community members were invited to come and discuss what do we want the city of San Antonio to look like in the year 2020. No parameters, community involvement, community investment, community dialogue, uh, what do we want the city to look like by 2020. And on their own, over the course of these five meetings, tailoring the, the issues very, very narrowly as we, as we progressed, the city came up with 11 different items. The city members came up with 11 different items. So on education being one of the big items that, that the city focused on for itself, we were very ambitious as a city, as community members, as neighbors. We were very ambitious for ourselves. And so what the city of San Antonio, our residents, decided was that 
in the area of education, we were going to orchestrate the greatest turnaround in the United States on education. That we wanted for ourselves 85% college readiness by the year 2020. These are ambitious goals, people. And so the product of the five um, focus groups and community discussions are in this report. And so we've got a chapter on education and what the community wants for itself in education. And so I encourage you to go online, essay2020.org, and look and, and read the report and look to see what your parents, the parents in your schools, the neighbors in your neighborhoods want for <coughs> itself in the year 2020 when it comes to education. The reason that I think that that is so important is because what that tells you, what that should tell each of you, is that you're not in this alone. What SA 2020 reveals, and what the recent election on pre-K 4SA reveals, is that it's not just you who has a personal stake in, these, uh, in the public school systems in San Antonio. It's our neighbors and our friends and our politicians and our policymakers and our corporate uh, partners. So what SA 2020 revealed to me and what it should reveal to you is that you're not in this alone. We're not in this alone. We have a goal for ourselves. And so the work that you're going to do today and tomorrow is critically important to setting the framework of moving forward. My stake in education is personal. I'm a product of the public edu education system. I went to school in the Edgewood Independent School System, and I'm sure my mother had no idea when she dropped me off in kindergarten that the Edgewood Independent School District was one of the poorest in the country. But she talked education up so much from the time I was born to the time I was four years old ready to go to school that I thought kindergarten was the most important thing in the whole world. I insisted on getting a full length gown <laughs> and wearing it to the first day of school. She has all these terrible pictures of me now wearing, being the only kid in school wearing this full length gown because the way she talked about school, it was such a big important thing in my life, I wanted to be dressed up for it. So I can't tell you how important educators were in my life. I was the first in my family to ever go to college. There was no one in my family who I ever knew had ever gone to college. All through school, through high school, the only people I ever knew that had ever gone to college were my teachers. And so when you talk about investments in our kids, you guys are on the front line. <coughs> And your teachers are on the front lines. I wouldn't be where I am today if it hadn't been for Ms. Partida in the first grade who pulled me aside and said, you know, you're going to be a great author someday because you're a really good writer. And I thought, I'm going to be a great author one day. <laughs> and so sometimes if I was acting up or getting distracted or staring out the window, Ms. Partida would look over at me and she'd nod and I'd think, oh, I better sit up straight because I'm going to be a, good a great author one day. And so... I didn't become a great author. I'm a trial lawyer, and I'm proud of what I do. But ironically, I ran into a schoolmate of mine several years after um, high school, and he says, oh, do you remember Miss Partida? Yes, we loved Miss Partida. And he goes, you know, she always told me I was going to grow up to be a great author one day. <laughs> 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 and he went on to college. And so the lesson is, Sometimes it's a personal investment in those kids. And so what you're doing here today is so critically important. Thank you for what you do every day, and thank you for your focus the next two days. Good luck. Miss Partida. Partida, she, she knew that one, one good line could get you a long way. Before I, before I go any further and introduce our next guest, one thing I do, uh, one, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't, and I didn't do this, and I apologize, is to actually announce the school districts that are here, um, because you really are the ones who are doing the work. I mean, the rest of us are here to augment and to provide support to you and, and help pull some of the things together. And so I want to make sure, I'm going to introduce individually before the presentations um, each school district, but I do want to recognize the teams. And so we have the Harlandale Independent School District is here, if they could raise your hand. Yeah. 
They were here early. Did you get café or not? And then we also have the Southwest Independent School District, I believe it's here. The San Antonio Independent School District. And then the Northside Independent School District. And again, I wanted to make sure that, uh, I didn't say that at the beginning, but uh, um, as I was sitting there thinking about it, I mean, you, you are the ones who are doing the work, and it's a tremendous um, um, a giving of your time for this initiative, but also it, you work on this every day, and so to have to, co to come to this event over the next two days and say, hey, how do we get better? How do we find uh, some shared uh, objectives, shared measurement across our school districts says a lot to your commitment, and I don't want to um, undervalue that and how much that means to us, and especially to me as, as I you know, move forward in this project. Uh, so thank you. A couple of other housekeeping uh, that I didn't mention. We, if you're not familiar with Cafe College, um, it is, how many of you, how many of you, ha is this your first time at Cafe College? Raise your hand. If, okay, awesome. So most people have been here. So if you've never been here though, if you, <laughs> uh, so if you've never been here, uh, if you step out this door and you take a left, uh, you uh, right and then a quick left, there's a ladies, men's and ladies room. So you have to take care of that. You can do it there. Uh, and then uh, we do have some meeting rooms in the back that we, uh, we will use to facilitate uh, the dialogue a little bit later. But uh, before that, let's move on to our next session. We have, uh, I want to introduce our next <coughs> presenter who's going to kind of help set the table around some data regarding um, the city of San Antonio and this SA 2020 go that we have. And that person is Jorge Elizondo. Uh, Jorge heads the research department at HEB and he brings a strong background to data analysis. Uh, he's a South San and Yale graduate and has a passion for improving student outcomes and in addition to the data uh, he's leading uh, for SA 2020, he sits on the Generation Texas San Antonio board. Uh, so he will now come up and provide some groundwork for us uh, and help us understand this very ambitious goal that we have here in San Antonio and how we're going to work towards it. So Jorge.